Um, so um, I have a confession to make. I stayed up uh, light, uh, last night um, trying to um, come up with a possible solution to build the community and move uh, 3D virtual cell forward. And I realized that uh, scientists are contrarians by nature. So instead of actually hosting those meetings on model sharing or community building, perhaps we should start with uh, meetings or model, model hiding and community destruction. That way we will do the opposite. So uh, that's uh, one possible solution. Uh, seriously though, uh, today I'd like to talk about software infrastructures and some of the uh, suggestions uh, that could be used to improve uh, biomedical modeling. So, first thing that comes to mind when you are talking about biomedical modeling or computational biology is uh, a cell. Okay, so a cell is, um, I'm just looking for a um, pointer. So cell is a very complex beast, right? If we, it's a highly heterogeneous uh, spatial structure where uh, thousands uh, of reactions take place uh, simultaneously and all those uh, organelles are here in cell to uh, make sure that uh, cell stays alive, okay? So uh, how do we model a single cell? There are many solutions. Most of them have been discussed already, so I'll just uh, show a few of them. So this is the work done by uh, Stephen Clinton uh, in Sandia National Lab, and he used ChemCell, a simulation environment, and he modeled uh, biochemistry of uh, E. coli, okay? And, uh, well, it's, those are the pictures from his models. He clearly can do uh, um, particle-based simulations, asking um, different uh, questions about uh, E. coli biochemistry, run uh, perturbative experiments. And, you know, things are nice. Uh, it's the, the E. coli is static, we can do biochemistry. Uh, and it's very impressive work. Another work done by Marcus Covert's lab was uh, trying to model a uh, cell cycle of mycoplasma genitalium. And uh, this is probably the first model we were on a computer, scientists were able to go from genotype to phenotype. So I'm just asking myself a question. Uh, how would we go from single cell to organism? So if we were to use the solutions that I discussed before, particle-based simulations, Monte Carlo-based simulations like uh, the one shown before by Terry, so uh, I did this uh, simple back end of the envelope uh, calculations. So assume that uh, mammalian cell has 50,000 proteins. So it's 100 times more than mycoplasma, okay? Now, if we assume that it took one supercomputer to simulate genital uh, mycoplasma genitalium on the, the, the life cycle, and I know that this is wrong. I talked to Marcus yesterday, and it's not a supercomputer. It took them uh, 10 hours on a single processor. And uh, uh, this, uh, the statement that it took one supercomputer was, of course, uh, taken from the popular press, which means that popular press is always wrong and you should never trust popular press. Mitt Romney trusted popular press and he lost elections, so uh, we have to be careful here. So anyway, let, let's, let's, let's go back to, uh, to this estimation. So uh, if we were to simulate every single cell in a human body, and approximately we have 10 to the 14th cells, and each cell has, is at least 100 times more complex than mycoplasma, uh, we would end up with uh, something like 10 to the 16 of supercomputers, okay? Uh, if we, th th this is a big number. Uh, there are not that many cell phones in, in the entire world, okay? So even if your iPhone could handle a, a simulation for single cell, we still couldn't do this. So clearly, there is a need to be more uh, creative in terms of uh, coming up with the solutions uh, for, for which could bridge scales, and this is what Peter uh, Hunter talked about. So we need to, uh, uh, to find a ways about, uh, to, to reduce models, to, uh, come up with uh, ways to link uh, different modeling scales. And uh, there are a certain class of uh, problems where we could solve everything at once, but those uh, things are quite rare. So let me give you an example of uh, what I mean. So this is a simulation that we tried in our lab. We tried to simulate liver necrosis due to acetaminophen uh, overdose, okay? So, uh, this is a picture of a uh, liver lobule. 
there are multiple sinusoids. So sinusoid is a, is a, a so the nice thing about liver, you can think of it as, as a parallel organ. So blood flows in and it's diverted into multiple sinusoids. And each sinusoid is like a blood vessel where you have hepatocytes, hepatic cells on, uh, on both sides of the vessels. And the, the toxins are, are extracted from the blood vessels and metabolized inside uh, each hepatocyte. So uh, one possible solution to, to uh, build whole organism model of, of liver uh, and, and the impact of liver on, on the whole organism is to first calculate what happens in the single sinusoid, okay? extract metabolic rates, put this information into structural model, uh, cell-based model uh, where we study uh, mechanics, and link outcomes, outputs from this model to the PP, PBPK model, which will operate at the entire scale, uh, the entire organism uh, scale, okay? So uh, the take home message from here is that we need to develop more techniques uh, which will help us bridge the scales from, from, from molecule to cell to uh, organ and to entire organism. So there's lots of work to do. More pragmatic question is the question of modeling platform. What do we mean by modeling platform? Herbert Saro mentioned that what we need here is a set of uh, components, modeling components. And uh, I'll try to argue that this is important, but not enough. Uh, so right now I'd like to uh, you know, discuss commercial success story, which is a MATLAB. MATLAB is a, well, everyone knows what MATLAB is. Uh, each time I go to NIH, NIH meeting on multi-scale modeling, everybody talks about model sharing, model platform, open source, yet 95% of people use MATLAB okay, for their models. And, and l let me ask you a question, why, why this is so? And, and there are clearly some features which make MATLAB a very successful product. First of all, it's easy to use with easy to understand and use scripting language. Okay? How many software tools, which are modeling software tools, actually can claim the same? Not many. Another thing, there is thousands, well, I mean not thousands, but hundreds of computational tools available under MATLAB. Those are called toolboxes. They provide user interfaces with nice visualization, code editors, well-defined data formats. MATLAB models are shareable by definition. Of course, within MATLAB community, but that's already something, okay? MATLAB is and, uh, used widely in classroom settings, and many students actually start their programming experience using MATLAB. Documentation is great. There is great uh, involvement of uh, math work in uh, outreach efforts. They provide training, they write books, and it's professionally maintained. So I think that those features could and should be copied in a modeling platform like 3D Virtual Cell to make uh, things work. Another scientific uh, uh, success story is uh, the physics analysis toolkit root. For those of you who did uh, high energy physics or particle physics, everybody knows root. So it's a set of C++ uh, routines which are commonly used uh, in, uh, in, in physics analysis, right? And uh, I don't know of any physicist who would rewrite uh, uh, parts of, of, of root. They, they, they simply download this library, compile it, and use it. And it's community maintained, and that's why it's successful. Even though they, okay, they don't really, uh, Provide, talk about standards. I mean, C++ is standard for them. So anyway, I'm getting to the end of my talk. Uh, so I think, in my opinion, the most important things to uh, deploy successful 3D uh, virtual cell implementation is provide uh, scalable components, reusable components, make sure uh, that uh, integration links and, and standards are there, uh, uh, make sure that you don't have to spend too much time trying to reuse components, so work on the APIs. Uh, release them as open source with reasonable licenses, so avoid uh, GPL if possible, and uh, provide good documentation. Now, it happens so that recently Python uh, emerged as a de facto standard for, for scri scripting language for science. There are many scientific libraries. I think it wouldn't cost uh, this community too much to release their tools as C++ code with Python wrappers. At the very least, you could have a scripting language which could integrate models and uh, bring this community together. So I think at this time I have to stop, so I'll do this.
Thank you very much.